In a bustling hospital, a young nurse's deeply ingrained prejudices lead her to mistreat an elderly black woman, unaware that this seemingly ordinary patient holds a powerful secret. As the nurse's disdain grows, so does the tension, until a shocking revelation forces her to confront not only her ignorance, but the very woman who may change her life forever. What is it about this patient that brings her to her knees, begging for forgiveness? Discover the stunning revelation behind this profound story of redemption. Before we get into the story, comment below where in the word you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to like and subscribe. The hospital's waiting room was bustling with the usual weekday chaos. Nurses moved in and out, doctors hurriedly passed through, and the murmur of patients waiting for care filled the air. It was a typical scene of urgency, where lives were assessed, treated, and often saved. But in the midst of this rhythm, an elderly woman entered the hospital, her demeanor calm and composed. Eleanor, a black woman in her late 70s, was gently pushed in a wheelchair by her caregiver. She looked frail but dignified, her dark skin framed by a simple yet elegant shawl. There was a quiet strength about her, a sense of resilience that only years of experience could bestow. Though she appeared ordinary to those who glanced her way, she was anything but. Eleanor had once been a renowned OBGYN, saving countless lives during her time at this very hospital. Yet her humility hid that fact from the casual observer. She had been experiencing headaches recently, sharp, sudden pains that left her concerned. It was rare for Eleanor to be in need of medical attention. For most of her life, she had been on the other side of the hospital bed, ensuring others were taken care of. But time catches up with everyone, and so, reluctantly, she found herself returning to the hospital, this time as a patient. As she approached the receptionist's desk, Eleanor waited patiently for her turn, her eyes scanning the room with the quiet observation of someone used to evaluating the needs of others. Her caregiver, a kind-hearted woman named Martha, stood by her side, ever attentive. Next, a voice called out. It was Lisa, a young nurse with sharp features and a no-nonsense attitude. Lisa was known for being efficient, but also for her lack of patience especially with patients she deemed less important. And in her mind today, that meant Eleanor. Lisa barely glanced at Eleanor as she approached. Name? She asked, her tone flat and impersonal. Eleanor Daniels, the elderly woman replied softly, her voice carrying the warmth of someone who had spent her life comforting others. Lisa typed the name into the computer without so much as a smile. You're here for a checkup. I've been having severe headaches lately, Eleanor said, shifting slightly in her wheelchair. Lisa glanced briefly at Eleanor, her eyes betraying a flash of judgment. Another elderly black woman, she thought, probably doesn't even have the insurance for the treatment she needs. I see, Lisa said, her tone dripping with indifference. She continued typing without making eye contact her fingers tapping impatiently on the keyboard. We'll need you to wait here for a bit. We are very busy today. Eleanor smiled, a soft gesture that reflected her understanding of the pressures of the medical field. I understand, she replied. Her caregiver Martha, however, shot a concerned glance at Lisa, sensing the coldness in her manner. Lisa turned away from Eleanor without a second thought, moving on to the next patient, who she greeted with a far more pleasant attitude. Eleanor's initial evaluation revealed that her condition might require further observation, so she was advised to stay in the hospital for a few days. As she was wheeled into a room and settled in, Lisa was assigned as her primary nurse, much to Martha's dismay. Eleanor sat quietly in her hospital bed, her frail frame barely noticeable beneath the crisp white sheets. The room was cold, both in temperature and atmosphere, with the sterile scent of antiseptic lingering in the air. Her eyes, however, were warm, though tired, and they held a kind of serenity that could only come from a lifetime of service and experience. Beside her, Martha, the ever-attentive caregiver, adjusted Eleanor's blanket, ensuring she was comfortable. 
Despite her condition, Eleanor's composure never faltered. It was nearing noon, and Eleanor had been waiting for Lisa to bring her prescribed medication. The headache that had brought her to the hospital in the first place had returned, throbbing behind her eyes, but she kept her discomfort hidden behind a calm smile. Martha had already pressed the call button twice, and each time they waited, Lisa's arrival was delayed. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, Lisa entered the room, her footsteps heavy with impatience. She didn't even look directly at Eleanor as she walked in, carrying a tray with the medication haphazardly placed on it. Her face bore the expression of someone who was barely holding on to her composure. Her lips pressed into a thin, tight line as she moved mechanically through her duties. Here, Lisa said, placing the tray on the table beside Eleanor's bed with a thud. She didn't bother to help Eleanor reach for the water or hand her the pills, a basic courtesy she would have easily extended to another patient. Thank you, dear, Eleanor said gently, a soft smile on her face as she reached for the water cup herself, her hand trembling slightly. Lisa stood with her arms crossed, watching with growing impatience. You know you could have called earlier if you were going to need help with everything, Lisa said, her tone sharp, as if Eleanor were an inconvenience rather than a patient in need of care. Martha, who had been observing silently, clenched her fists. She could feel the heat rising to her face, wanting nothing more than to step in and defend Eleanor. The way Lisa's words dripped with condescension, like she was doing Eleanor a favor rather than fulfilling her duty, made Martha's blood boil. But Eleanor, as always, was composed, her grace intact despite the harsh treatment. I didn't want to trouble anyone. I know you're all very busy, Eleanor replied, her voice as gentle as ever. Her eyes flickered with a hint of sadness, though she still smiled warmly at Lisa, as if offering forgiveness for the disrespect. Lisa snorted, rolling her eyes. Busy doesn't even cover it. Some of us have real work to do, she muttered, barely loud enough for Eleanor to hear, but loud enough to sting. Eleanor, maintaining her composure, slowly lifted the water to her lips and swallowed the pills, her movements deliberate and careful. She placed the cup back on the tray and looked up at Lisa, her expression soft and kind, despite the treatment she was receiving. I appreciate everything you're doing for me, Eleanor said softly, her gratitude genuine despite Lisa's rudeness. Lisa didn't even acknowledge the thanks. Instead, she looked at her watch, tapping her foot impatiently. Anything else you need? Because I have other patients to see, you know, she snapped her eyes cold and devoid of empathy. Martha couldn't take it anymore. She stepped forward, her voice firm but restrained. Excuse me, but could you at least try to show some respect? She asked, her eyes narrowing as she looked at Lisa. This woman deserves to be treated with dignity. Lisa turned, her eyes narrowing at Martha with an almost sneering expression. Oh, really? She said, her voice dripping with sarcasm. What makes her so special? Just another old lady who needs everything done for her. The words hung in the air, cold and biting. Martha's face flushed with anger. But before she could respond, Eleanor reached out and gently touched her hand, her eyes meeting Martha's with a look that spoke volumes. Let it be, dear, Eleanor said softly, her voice calm, though there was a glimmer of sorrow in her eyes. It's all right. Martha's jaw tightened, but she obeyed, stepping back. She couldn't understand how Eleanor remained so calm, so gracious, in the face of such blatant disrespect. Lisa scoffed, clearly dismissing the moment. She moved to leave the room, but just as she reached the door, she turned back, her eyes narrowing slightly as she looked at Eleanor. You know, maybe you should have taken better care of yourself when you were younger, she said her voice laced with malice. Then you wouldn't be sitting here needing everyone to cater to you. Eleanor blinked, the insult hanging in the air like a physical blow. But still, her face remained composed. Health isn't something we can always control, she replied softly. I did my best with what I had, as we all do. Lisa rolled her eyes. Right, 
she muttered under her breath, before turning sharply on her heel and leaving the room, the door closing behind her with a cold click. Martha stood there, her hands trembling with anger. She looked at Eleanor, who simply sighed and leaned back into her pillow, her eyes closing briefly as if to block out the harshness of the moment. I don't understand how you can let her speak to you that way, Martha said, her voice barely containing her frustration. She has no right to treat you like that. Eleanor opened her eyes, turning her head slightly to look at Martha. Her expression was soft, though there was a weight behind her eyes, the burden of a lifetime's worth of knowledge and experience. Some people carry burdens we don't understand, she said quietly. Anger and bitterness. They only harm the person who carries them. It's not my place to add to that burden. Martha shook her head incredulous. But you've done nothing wrong. She's treating you like you're worthless, and you don't deserve that. Eleanor smiled gently, a sad smile, and took Martha's hand. I know my worth, she said softly. But it's not always for me to defend. In time, everyone shows their true selves. Lisa will learn, one way or another. Martha swallowed, the lump of emotion rising in her throat. She admired Eleanor's strength, but it also pained her to see someone so kind treated so poorly. Later that day, Eleanor's condition took a turn for the worse. What had started as headaches intensified into severe, debilitating pain, and her blood pressure rose to dangerous levels. Martha, now beside herself with worry, pressed the call button again and again, but as usual, Lisa was slow to respond. When she finally arrived, her impatience was evident. She entered the room with a dismissive air, her face set in irritation, as if the urgency was an inconvenience. What's the problem now? Lisa asked, her tone sharp, glancing disinterestedly at Eleanor, as though she were just another elderly patient prone to exaggeration. Her headaches are worse, and her blood pressure is through the roof, Martha snapped, unable to contain her frustration any longer. She needs immediate attention. Lisa sighed, waving her hand dismissively. It's just a headache, and older patients often have blood pressure issues. I'll make a note of it and tell the doctor later. But her indifference, as it turned out, came at a cost. Eleanor's condition deteriorated rapidly and it wasn't long before her situation became critical. Martha, frantic, finally sought out another nurse, who promptly reported Eleanor's worsening state to the attending doctor. By the time the director of the hospital, Dr. Harris, heard about the case, Eleanor was being rushed through an emergency response protocol. Dr. Harris was known for being a calm and collected leader, but when news reached his desk that one of the hospital's most respected former doctors was in such a dire condition due to negligence, his patience snapped. He immediately called for a meeting with all the doctors and nurses responsible for Eleanor's care. When Lisa entered the room, she could feel the tension in the air. She knew something was wrong, but the full scope of the situation hadn't hit her yet. Dr. Harris stood at the head of the room, his usually composed demeanor replaced by an intense, simmering anger. His voice was low but cutting as he addressed the staff. Do any of you realize who the patient in room 204 is? He began, his eyes scanning the faces before him, stopping on Lisa, who shifted uncomfortably under his gaze. Lisa swallowed hard, unsure where this was going, but sensing that it wasn't good. She remained silent, hoping to blend into the background. That patient, Dr. Harris continued, his voice rising, is Dr. Eleanor Daniels, a legend in our field, a woman who has trained some of the finest doctors in this very hospital, and you... His eyes locked onto Lisa. You have treated her with nothing but neglect and disrespect. The room went silent. The weight of his words dropped like a hammer, and Lisa felt as though the air had been sucked out of her lungs. Do you even understand the gravity of what you've done? Dr. Harris's voice was tight with restrained fury. Dr. Daniels is not just any patient. She was a trailblazer in obstetrics, responsible for saving countless lives, including cases that others had deemed hopeless. 
She has trained multiple generations of doctors, many of whom are now leaders in their fields. She dedicated her entire life to this hospital. This very place that you're standing in now owes much of its reputation to her. And yet, you treated her as if she was less than human. Lisa's mind raced. Dr. Eleanor Daniels. The name now echoed in her mind with full clarity. She had heard the stories but had never connected the dots. She stood there, speechless, her face pale, guilt washing over her in waves. You were responsible for ensuring her care, and yet here we are, rushing to stabilize her because you neglected her needs, Dr. Harris continued, his voice sharp. You failed not only as a nurse but as a human being. Lisa felt her stomach churn as the enormity of her mistake settled in. She had spent days treating Eleanor with disdain, thinking of her as just another elderly black patient, someone insignificant. Now she was realizing the full scope of who Eleanor really was, someone far beyond the simple title of patient. I cannot tolerate this kind of behavior in my hospital, Dr. Harris concluded. Effective immediately, you are on probation. One more incident like this, and you will be permanently dismissed. Lisa stood outside Eleanor's room, her heart racing, her mind flooded with guilt and shame. How had she been so blind? She felt sick to her stomach, knowing that her actions had endangered someone who had done so much for others. But as she stood there, lost in her thoughts, a nurse approached her with a message from Dr. Harris. Eleanor Daniels would like to meet with you, the nurse said. Lisa's heart skipped a beat. Why would Eleanor, after everything, want to meet her? The thought of facing her now, after learning the truth about her identity, was terrifying. Nevertheless, Lisa nodded and slowly made her way down the hall toward Eleanor's room. Inside, Eleanor was sitting upright, looking frailer than before, but her eyes still carried that same calm warmth that Lisa had seen, but never truly acknowledged. Martha stood by her side, and as Lisa entered, she shot her a cold, disapproving glance. Lisa's steps faltered, her hands trembling slightly as she approached the bed. I... I'm sorry, Dr. Daniels, Lisa began, her voice barely above a whisper. I had no idea. Eleanor raised her hand gently, signaling for Lisa to stop. There's no need to apologize for not knowing, Eleanor said softly, her voice as steady and kind as it had always been. But there is always a need to do better once we do know. Lisa's eyes filled with tears. How could Eleanor be so calm, so understanding, after all the cruelty she had shown her? I don't deserve your forgiveness, Lisa said, her voice breaking. I treated you so poorly, and now I see how wrong I was. Eleanor looked at Lisa for a long moment, her gaze full of both wisdom and understanding. Everyone makes mistakes, she said gently. It's what we do after that matters. Lisa couldn't hold back the tears any longer. They streamed down her face as she knelt beside Eleanor's bed. I'm so sorry, she sobbed, her words barely audible. I was wrong. I was so wrong. Eleanor reached out and placed her hand gently on Lisa's head, a simple gesture of forgiveness. I've lived long enough to know that people can change, she said softly. I believe you can too. After the emotional encounter, Eleanor requested to meet Dr. Harris. He arrived quickly, expecting her to discuss her medical treatment or the poor care she had received. Instead, Eleanor, with her calm dignity, made a request that surprised him. I know Lisa was disciplined, Eleanor said, her voice steady. But I'd like to ask that you give her another chance. Dr. Harris blinked in surprise. Dr. Daniels, after everything she's done, I wouldn't blame you if you asked for her immediate dismissal. Eleanor smiled softly. I've spent my life in hospitals, Dr. Harris. I've seen the best and the worst in people. Lisa made a mistake, yes, but I believe there's a chance for her to learn from it. Dr. Harris looked at Eleanor, his respect for her deepening even further. If that's what you wish, I'll grant it, 
but know that Lisa's probation will remain in place. Eleanor nodded. That's fair. I only ask that we give her room to grow. After the meeting, Lisa was allowed to continue caring for Eleanor, albeit with strict supervision. Her attitude was noticeably better than before. She was more attentive, more respectful, but the remnants of her prejudice still lingered beneath the surface. She was careful to avoid overt disrespect, but there was a stiffness in her manner, a reluctance to fully let go of the biases that had been ingrained in her. Eleanor, however, remained patient, treating Lisa with the same kindness she showed everyone. Over the days that followed, Lisa found herself drawn into deeper conversations with Eleanor, learning not just about her legendary status in the medical field, but about her life, her struggles, and the principles that had guided her. Though Lisa's actions improved, the true change within her was still on the horizon, waiting for the moment when she would finally confront the deeper issues within herself. The prejudices that had clouded her judgment and poisoned her interactions. It would take a further revelation, one far closer to home, for Lisa to truly understand the weight of her actions and the profound impact Eleanor had had on her life long before they ever met in that hospital room. It had been a few days since Lisa was put on probation, and her mother, Mrs. Thompson, was scheduled to visit her at the hospital. Mrs. Thompson had always been proud of her daughter's achievements, how Lisa had become a nurse working at a prestigious hospital, caring for the sick. She had never imagined that behind Lisa's professional exterior lay deep prejudices that could harm the very people she was supposed to help. As Mrs. Thompson entered the hospital, she was eager to surprise Lisa. She hadn't told her daughter she was coming, hoping to catch a moment to observe her at work. She walked through the bustling halls, her eyes scanning the name tags of nurses as they passed. Then, through the slightly ajar door of one of the patient rooms, she saw her daughter, standing beside a bed. Mrs. Thompson smiled, about to call out to Lisa, when her gaze shifted to the elderly woman lying in the bed. Her heart skipped a beat. The woman's face, though older and more tired, was unmistakable. Eleanor Daniels. Mrs. Thompson's hands instinctively moved to her mouth, trying to stifle the gasp that nearly escaped. Could it really be? The woman who had saved both her life and Lisa's more than 30 years ago was lying right there, being taken care of by her own daughter? It seemed like an impossible coincidence, but there was no mistaking it. Eleanor Daniels had once been the doctor who made the impossible happen when Mrs. Thompson faced life-threatening complications during Lisa's birth. Hospitals across the city had turned her away, labeling her condition too dangerous to handle. But Dr. Eleanor Daniels had been different. She had taken the case without hesitation and in that fateful moment had saved both mother and child. But as Mrs. Thompson's thoughts flooded with gratitude and memories, the scene unfolding in front of her pulled her back into the present. She watched in horror as Lisa interacted with Eleanor. Gone was the respect Mrs. Thompson had expected to see. Instead, Lisa's posture was stiff, her tone curt, and her demeanor cold. The words that followed turned Mrs. Thompson's stomach. Let me know if you need anything else, Lisa said, her voice clipped and detached. I'll be back later. Just don't press the button every time you feel a little uncomfortable. Mrs. Thompson's heart sank as she watched her daughter treat Dr. Daniels with such dismissive indifference. Her excitement turned to dread. How could her daughter, the one who owed her very life to this woman, treat her like this? Before she could say anything, Lisa turned and walked out of the room, heading toward the nurse's station. Mrs. Thompson followed, her mind reeling, her heart pounding in her chest. In the nurse's break room, Lisa sat down with a sigh, exhaustion etched across her face. She barely noticed her mother walking in until Mrs. Thompson sat directly across from her. Lisa's face lit up, though tired, at the sight of her mother. Mom, what are you doing here? Lisa said, standing to give her mother a hug. You should have told me you were coming. I would have... We need to talk, Lisa, Mrs. Thompson interrupted, her tone unusually stern. Lisa stopped mid-sentence, 
the warmth of the moment dissipating as she noticed her mother's serious expression. What's wrong? Lisa asked, her brows furrowing. I just saw you taking care of a patient, Mrs. Thompson began, her voice carefully controlled. An elderly black woman, Dr. Eleanor Daniels. At the sound of Eleanor's name, Lisa's face paled slightly, though she tried to keep her composure. Oh, um, yeah, that's her. That's her, Mrs. Thompson repeated, incredulity creeping into her voice. Do you know who she is? Lisa averted her gaze, shifting uncomfortably in her chair. I know now, Mom. I've been told she used to be a big deal here. A big deal? Mrs. Thompson's voice trembled slightly, though she tried to remain calm. Lisa, that woman, Dr. Daniels, is the reason you and I are alive today. Lisa blinked, confusion flashing in her eyes. What? What are you talking about? Mrs. Thompson took a deep breath, gathering her thoughts as she prepared to tell her daughter the story she had never thought she'd need to explain. When I was pregnant with you, I developed severe complications. It was dangerous for both of us. Every hospital I went to refused to take my case because it was too risky. I was ready to give up, Lisa, ready to accept that I might not survive and that I might lose you. Lisa stared at her mother, her confusion deepening. She had never heard this story before. But then, Mrs. Thompson continued, her voice softening with emotion. I found Dr. Daniels. She was working at a different hospital at the time. She didn't hesitate for a second when she saw my case. She took me in, despite the risks, and performed the surgery that saved both of us. If it weren't for her, Lisa, neither of us would be here today. Lisa's eyes widened in shock. The weight of her mother's words hit her like a tidal wave, crashing over the fragile walls of guilt and shame she had built over the past few days. Dr. Daniels had saved her life. The life she now had, the very career she had built, existed because of the woman she had so carelessly disrespected. Mrs. Thompson's voice trembled slightly as she continued. And now, after everything she did for us, you're treating her like this. You... you insulted her. You dismissed her. I saw it with my own eyes. How could you? Lisa's breath hitched her throat tightening as she struggled to process the full gravity of what her mother was saying. Her face turned pale, and she found herself trembling. She had been disrespectful, not only to a patient, but to the very woman who had made her life possible. I... I didn't know, Lisa whispered, her voice barely audible. I didn't know it was her. Mrs. Thompson's eyes softened though they still held a sadness that pierced Lisa's heart. You didn't know, but you should have cared enough to treat her with respect, regardless of who she was. That's what being a nurse is about, Lisa. It's about caring for people, not based on their color, their age, or who you think they are, but because they're human beings who deserve dignity. Tears began to well in Lisa's eyes, her vision blurring as the realization of her actions crashed down on her. She had let her prejudices cloud her judgment, had let her exhaustion and bitterness turn her into someone she didn't even recognize. I'm so sorry, Lisa choked out, her voice breaking as tears spilled down her cheeks. I... I didn't mean to. I didn't know. Mrs. Thompson reached out, placing her hand gently over her daughter's trembling one. You didn't know, but now you do. What matters is what you do next. The next morning, Lisa walked into the hospital with a heavy heart. She had spent the entire night replaying her mother's words over and over in her mind. The guilt was unbearable. She knew she couldn't change the past, but she could make things right. With her mother beside her, Lisa walked slowly down the hallway toward Eleanor's room. Her heart pounded in her chest and her hands were clammy with nervousness. What if Eleanor refused to forgive her? What if the damage was irreparable? But as they entered the room, Lisa saw Eleanor sitting up in bed, looking frail but composed, 
her kind eyes lifting to meet theirs. Martha was sitting beside her, and when she saw Lisa, her expression tightened, clearly still upset about how Lisa had treated Eleanor. But Martha remained silent, watching the scene unfold. Lisa's legs felt like they would give out beneath her, but she forced herself to walk over to Eleanor's bedside. Her voice trembled as she spoke. Dr. Daniels, I... Her words caught in her throat as tears threatened to fall once again. I'm so sorry. Eleanor's face remained calm, her eyes soft and understanding. She watched Lisa with a quiet patience, waiting for her to continue. I didn't know who you were, Lisa continued, her voice breaking. But that doesn't matter. I should have treated you with respect no matter what. I've been... I've been awful to you. And now I know. I know that you're the reason I'm alive today. You saved me. And my mother. I owe you everything. And I treated you like... Like nothing. Lisa couldn't hold back her tears any longer. She fell to her knees beside Eleanor's bed, sobbing uncontrollably. I don't deserve your forgiveness, she cried, her voice shaking with guilt. But I'm begging you. Please. I'm so, so sorry. The room was silent for a moment, the only sound being Lisa's quiet sobs. Mrs. Thompson watched, her heart heavy, but hopeful that her daughter's apology would be heard. Eleanor, her hands trembling slightly from age, reached out and gently placed a hand on Lisa's head. Her voice, though soft, carried the same warmth and wisdom it always had. You are forgiven, she said simply. Lisa looked up, her eyes wide with shock. She had expected anger, maybe even indifference, but not forgiveness. Yet here it was, offered so freely, so generously by the very woman she had wronged. Eleanor's touch was gentle, her hand resting lightly on Lisa's head, like a grandmother offering comfort to a child. You are forgiven, Eleanor repeated softly, her eyes kind. But remember, forgiveness isn't just for you, it's for me too. Holding on to bitterness only weighs us both down. Lisa was speechless. She had expected rejection, or at least a stern reprimand for the way she had treated Eleanor. Instead, she was met with a grace that she hadn't earned, with a kindness she couldn't understand. I... Lisa began, her voice trembling. I don't deserve this. I've been so... so blind, so full of anger, of prejudice. I didn't even realize it was there, but now I see. I see how wrong I was. I see how I've let my frustrations, my ignorance, cloud everything I do. Eleanor gave her a soft, understanding smile, her eyes reflecting the wisdom of a woman who had lived long enough to witness both the best and worst in people. We all have our burdens, Lisa. Yours is not unique. But now that you see it, you have a choice. You can let it define you, or you can let it go. Lisa nodded tears streaming down her cheeks as she knelt beside the bed, still in disbelief that Eleanor could be so forgiving. I want to change. I swear, I will be better. I'll work harder. I'll be more patient, more understanding. I'll be the nurse I should have been from the start. Eleanor patted her head gently and withdrew her hand. That's all I ask, Lisa. To be better. For yourself and for your patients and to remember that no one is less deserving of care, no matter what they look like, where they come from, or how old they are. Lisa nodded again, her heart filled with both remorse and a renewed sense of purpose. She stood, wiping away her tears, feeling as though a massive weight had been lifted from her shoulders. Over the next few days, Lisa's transformation was clear to everyone who worked with her. She took her responsibilities more seriously, showing more compassion and patience than she had in years. Her interactions with all patients, especially those who she might have once dismissed, were marked by a new sense of humility and respect. She began spending more time with Eleanor, asking questions not only about her condition but about her life, her career, her family, her legacy. 
The more Lisa learned about Eleanor's contributions to the field of obstetrics, the more she realized just how much of an honor it was to care for someone who had done so much for so many. One afternoon, as Lisa helped adjust Eleanor's pillows, she hesitated before speaking. Can I ask you something, Dr. Daniels? Lisa asked, her voice more respectful than it had ever been. Eleanor, who had grown fond of their conversations, smiled. Of course, dear. What's on your mind? Lisa bit her lip, unsure of how to phrase the question. How did you... I mean, with all you've done, all the lives you've saved, how did you stay so humble? How did you never lose yourself in it all? Eleanor looked at her thoughtfully, her eyes reflecting years of wisdom. Humility comes from remembering that we are all human, Lisa. We are all vulnerable. The power we have as doctors, as nurses, as caregivers, it's a privilege, not a right. I've seen life come into this world, and I've seen it leave. It reminds me every day that none of us are above anyone else. Lisa nodded, the weight of Eleanor's words sinking in. I think I lost sight of that, she admitted quietly. I got so caught up in everything. The stress, the work, the exhaustion. I started seeing people as burdens instead of lives I was supposed to help. Eleanor's smile was gentle, but her voice was firm. It happens to the best of us, but what matters is that you've found your way back. Don't lose sight of it again. A week later, Eleanor's condition began to improve. The medications were working, and her headaches had subsided. The doctors were pleased with her progress, and it seemed as though she would soon be discharged. Before Eleanor left the hospital, Lisa had one final gesture of gratitude to offer. She had gathered the hospital staff, doctors, nurses, and even the hospital director, Dr. Harris, into the conference room for a special moment. Eleanor, surprised by the invitation, entered the room to find all eyes on her and Lisa standing at the front, holding a small plaque. Dr. Daniels, Lisa began, her voice filled with emotion. We wanted to take a moment to acknowledge everything you've done for this hospital, for the medical field, and for all of us. You've not only saved lives, but you've shaped the future of medicine with your wisdom, your compassion, and your dedication. Eleanor's eyes widened, touched by the unexpected tribute. Lisa held up the plaque. In honor of your service, we've decided to name one of the hospital's new wings after you. The Eleanor Daniels Maternity Wing will stand as a reminder of everything you've given to this hospital and to all the lives you've touched. The room erupted into applause and Eleanor's eyes filled with tears. She had never expected such recognition, especially not after so many years of quiet service. But here, standing before her, was the next generation of doctors and nurses, all looking at her with the same admiration she had once had for her mentors. Lisa stepped forward, handing Eleanor the plaque. This is for you, she said, her voice soft with gratitude. Thank you, Dr. Daniels, for everything. Eleanor smiled, accepting the plaque with trembling hands. Thank you, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. This, this means more to me than I can ever express. As the room quieted and the staff began to disperse, Lisa remained by Eleanor's side. I'll make sure I live up to your legacy, Lisa said quietly. I won't forget the lessons you've taught me. Eleanor smiled, a sense of peace and fulfillment washing over her. You already have, Lisa. As Eleanor left the hospital, Lisa stood by the window, watching her depart with a new sense of purpose. She had learned more than just medical skills in the past few weeks. She had learned the power of humility, of respect, and of forgiveness. Eleanor had not only healed her patients over the years, she had healed Lisa in a way she hadn't even known she needed. From that day forward, Lisa carried Eleanor's lessons with her, ensuring that every patient who crossed her path was treated with the dignity and care they deserved. And though Eleanor had left the hospital, her legacy remained, not just in the wing that now bore her name, but in the hearts of those she had touched. And for Lisa, Eleanor's generosity and forgiveness 
had given her something she would never forget. The chance to change, to be better, and to honor the woman who had saved her life in more ways than one. As the days passed after Eleanor left the hospital, Lisa found herself reflecting constantly on the lessons she had learned. Each patient she encountered now was met with newfound compassion. Her previous biases, which had been hidden even from herself for so long, had become something she was acutely aware of. Every time a situation arose where Lisa felt her old prejudices creeping in, whether through frustration or weariness, she would pause and remember Eleanor's calm, forgiving smile. The hospital staff also began to notice a change in Lisa. Her colleagues, who had once seen her as aloof or even harsh, were surprised to see her greeting patients with a genuine smile, taking time to listen to their concerns and speaking to them with a warmth that hadn't been there before. Her fellow nurses began to comment quietly among themselves, some surprised, others admiring the shift in Lisa's demeanor. The change wasn't only noticed by staff, patients too began to remark on the improved care they received from her. She had gone from a nurse many avoided to one patients specifically requested for their care. But for Lisa, the true test of her transformation came a few weeks after Eleanor's departure. One afternoon, Lisa was assigned to care for a new patient, a middle-aged black woman named Mrs. Jacobs, who was admitted to the hospital with severe complications from a long undiagnosed medical condition. Mrs. Jacobs had been passed between doctors for years, with many overlooking her symptoms, attributing them to minor ailments without taking the time to fully investigate. Lisa's first reaction when she read the medical chart was frustration. The case was complicated and the patient's health was deteriorating quickly. The old version of herself might have dismissed Mrs. Jacobs as just another difficult case, frustrated with how neglected the woman's condition had become and how much time it would take to stabilize her. But instead of giving in to that frustration, Lisa thought of Eleanor. She remembered the patience and diligence with which Eleanor had approached every case, no matter how complicated or thankless. When Lisa entered Mrs. Jacobs's room, she found the woman lying weakly in bed, her face gaunt, her eyes dim with exhaustion. Mrs. Jacobs had been through the medical system for years, and it was clear from the defeated look in her eyes that she had come to expect neglect. Mrs. Jacobs, Lisa said gently as she approached the bed, I'm Nurse Lisa. I'll be taking care of you today. Mrs. Jacobs looked up at Lisa, her expression wary. I've been through a lot of hospitals, she said softly, her voice tinged with fatigue. They never seem to figure out what's really wrong with me. Lisa nodded, pulling up a chair to sit beside the bed. I've read your file, she said, her tone calm and reassuring. I see that you've been through a lot, and I'm sorry that no one has taken the time to really listen to you before. But I'm here now, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you get the care you deserve. The woman's eyes widened slightly at Lisa's words. It had been a long time since someone in a white coat or nurse's uniform had treated her with such kindness. Her lips trembled as if she were unsure whether to believe Lisa's promise. Lisa placed a gentle hand on Mrs. Jacobs's arm, offering her a small but genuine smile. I'm here for you, she said softly, and I'll make sure you get the attention you need. For the next few days, Lisa worked closely with the doctors on Mrs. Jacob's case, advocating for more comprehensive tests and ensuring that her symptoms weren't dismissed. The hospital staff began to notice the change in Lisa even more, how she stayed late to check on Mrs. Jacobs, how she took the time to explain procedures to her patient and reassure her during the more difficult moments. One morning, as Lisa was making her rounds, she glanced down the hall and saw a familiar figure at the entrance to the maternity wing. Her heart skipped a beat. It was Eleanor, her posture still dignified despite the months that had passed. She was standing near the entrance, speaking softly to a young doctor who was clearly in awe of the legendary figure. Lisa felt a sudden surge of emotion, both gratitude and a strange sense of pride that Eleanor had returned to the hospital where she had left such a profound mark. Gathering her courage, 
Lisa made her way down the hall toward her former patient, hoping to catch her attention. Dr. Daniels? Lisa called softly as she approached, her voice filled with warmth. Eleanor turned, her eyes lighting up when she saw Lisa. Nurse Lisa, she said, her voice gentle as always. It's good to see you. Lisa smiled, her heart swelling at the thought that Eleanor still remembered her. It's good to see you too, she replied. I... I've been thinking about you a lot lately. Your lessons, your kindness. It's changed me in ways I didn't expect. Eleanor's eyes crinkled at the corners, her smile knowing. I'm glad to hear that, she said softly. You had it in you all along, Lisa. Sometimes it just takes a little nudge to bring it out. Lisa nodded, her throat tightening with emotion. I just wanted to thank you again, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. For everything. Eleanor reached out and gently touched Lisa's arm. You don't need to thank me, she said. You've done the work yourself. I'm proud of you. Lisa blinked back tears, overwhelmed by the depth of Eleanor's kindness and her enduring belief in the goodness of people. I'll keep doing my best, she promised. I know you will, Eleanor said with a gentle smile. And remember, it's never too late to make a difference in someone's life, whether you're the one giving the care or receiving it. With that, Eleanor turned and walked down the hall, leaving Lisa standing there with a renewed sense of purpose. Eleanor's words echoed in her mind, and Lisa knew that she would carry them with her for the rest of her career, and perhaps even her life. Lisa's transformation was more than just a change in behavior, it was a shift in her entire perspective on life, on the people she served, and on herself. The lessons she had learned from Eleanor became the foundation upon which she built the rest of her nursing career. Her approach to patient care evolved, driven by a commitment to compassion and understanding that transcended the biases she had once held. Word of Lisa's turnaround spread through the hospital. She became known not only as a skilled nurse, but as a compassionate advocate for her patients, particularly those who had been overlooked or mistreated by the system. Her story of redemption, how she had learned from her mistakes and sought to do better, became an example to others, a reminder that even the deepest prejudices could be unlearned, and even the hardest hearts could soften with time and humility. Eleanor's legacy too lived on. The Eleanor Daniels maternity wing became a beacon of excellence and care, a place where patients were treated with the respect and dignity they deserved, no matter who they were or where they came from. Doctors and nurses alike shared stories of the legendary Dr. Daniels with each new generation, ensuring that her contributions to the field and her deep humanity were never forgotten. And for Lisa, every time she walked through those hospital doors, she was reminded of the woman who had not only saved her life as a baby, but had also saved her soul as an adult. Eleanor's forgiveness had given Lisa the opportunity to change, and Lisa, in turn, had used that opportunity to become the nurse she had always aspired to be. In the end, it wasn't just Eleanor's medical legacy that endured, it was her legacy of compassion, of seeing the humanity in every person, that changed the lives of everyone she touched. And through Lisa, that legacy would continue one patient at a time.